And breaking right now, the loose women race war has stepped up a gear. After two of the show's panelists, Judy Love and Charlene White, decided to target me personally after I commented on the hypocrisy and irony of woke ITV saying that all white panels were not acceptable, but it's perfectly fine to have an all black panel. Now you can imagine the mainstream media absolutely love Charlene's response. OK Magazine, The Independent, loads of people writing all about it. But actually, I think what these two women are now perpetuating shows why critical race theory is so damaging. Because it treats the races in a completely different way. So all I said, by the way, I just need to clarify this. All I said was that woke ITV certainly has a particularly funny diversity policy. Charlene White responded by writing, Bitterness is a very lonely colour, Dan. Black women face some of the worst abuse on social media. That is a fact. So this man, talking about me, with a following of almost half a million, it's actually over half a million, but fine, decides to target four black women for having successful careers. How on earth did I do that? Riling the racists for clout and clicks is the weirdest pastime. And then Judy Love, she's allegedly a comedian, although I've never seen her say anything funny. She weighed in saying, well, someone was bored today. However, inciting hate and racism toward four hardworking, successful black women really shows the low level some are willing to go for attention. It's crazy how much it bothers some to see us on TV. But guess what? We'll be back again soon. So I'm going to respond to Charlene White and Judy Love now for the first time. Because let me be very clear. I was inciting nothing. And it's actually completely despicable for you to try and shut down any sort of debate over the madness of DEI and the madness of positive discrimination practices because you throw around terms like inciting hate and inciting racism. That's sick because I wasn't doing that. And you know that. You're being incredibly intellectually dishonest. What I was doing is pointing out the clear irony and hypocrisy that ITV, woke ITV, thinks it's completely wrong nowadays to have four white women on a panel, even though, let's be honest, we are a majority white country, an over 80% white country. It used to be considered perfectly acceptable. But ITV has decided that is completely wrong, and they have been criticized for it. However, having four black panelists, even though the black population in the UK is under 10% of our total numbers. And in fact, there's no diversity when you look at these four black women because they all come from a very similar background, live in a very similar way, come from a very similar class. That isn't diversity. And I was simply trying to make the point that there shouldn't be hypocrisy over this and that ITV has a very funny idea of what is considered diversity. Now, if we try and stop debates on those types of issues by throwing around disgusting and discriminatory terms like inciting racism and inciting hate, then no wonder the left are actually the people who are accused of driving the most hate in society today. So let me bring in two fabulous super the star journalists now, Georgia Leah Gaholi and Angela Levin. So Georgia, can you understand why I'm so angry about this? Because I was certainly not doing anything that Charlene White and Judy Love accused me of, but what it feels like they want to do is shut down any debate around positive discrimination practices, which are very much in place at ITV, and say that if you want to debate those practices, you're a racist. You're inciting hate. Mm, absolutely. In your tweet, nothing about race was mentioned. However, that's instantly what the panellists jumped to. I think that's unfortunate. I think without obviously wanting to read too much into her own mindset, there could be some kind of victim mentality there, or maybe she herself wanted to rile up her own followers, for example. I actually, as a huge coincidence, I believe I watched the show that day because I recognised the ladies' outfits, and they discussed uh, the matter of Chris Cabba being killed by a police uh, officer. 
and the kind of uh, the controversy that came after that. And I was kind of baffled. I was sort of listening to it in the background how they all seemed to agree um, somewhat that possibly something had been done wrong, um, or they seemed to kind of view Chris Cabba uh, as some kind of victim. Um, I, there was there was a bit of disagreement, but they seemed all to kind of at least think that maybe you know people were right to um, you know bring this matter to trial. And obviously we know what happened. Um, the police officer was in the right. Chris Cabba was quite violently resisting arrest, and this was someone who had um, you know a pretty horrific track record involved in gang culture unfortunately and i think it's tragic that someone's life gets to that obviously but they have responsibility for that and i think um there's kind of this this approach in the progressive media which i would i would say that loose women is probably uh, a bit more open to debate because it's a panel show than a lot of shows however they don't necessarily have um people who are openly right-wing on it often um and i think that's obvious uh, it's quite similar to the show uh the view in america which kind of maybe 10, 15 years ago, they may have had more conservative people on, but now it's just kind of, it really is an echo chamber. And I think it's obvious from the way she responded that that is the kind of the ITV mindset, unfortunately. Yeah, and it's groupthink, isn't it? And that groupthink perpetuates through the panel. And actually, Carol McGiffin, who was the best loose women by far, she came on my GB News show uh, you know, a couple of years ago to say she'd had to leave because it's so woke and actually they didn't tolerate anyone who went against the group thing. But Angela Levin, the point I was trying to make was that surely if you're saying it's unacceptable to have four white panellists on something, then it's also unacceptable to have four black panellists on something. There needs to be genuine diversity. Well, um, I don't think quite the same as you in this case. I think that actually um, so many people are now sort of wound up with anger and frustration. And I think that they expose all that. And the smallest thing, they burst to the anger and make ridiculous accusations. Um, and I think that there's something wrong with the whole of society at the moment because we are all very angry and frustrated about almost everything. And I think the way, I'm not talk, telling you what to do, but the way to do it, in my view, is to ignore it and just let people get on with it and it passes. Um, and, I, and I think that um, we mustn't sort of nitpick on that. Other people can, ITV can, let them do it. But actually, um, you, you can just get on with it in your own way. And you're not a racist at all. I've never seen the slightest in, in ignition of that. And I think that we just have to um, try and be ourselves and not bother about a lot of people who are desperate to be woke and want to try anything to sort of win that battle. And actually they can't because they're not sort of made for that. So they do all sorts of other things and then get very angry. But first, we've been told our whole lives that wrinkle creams were the easiest way to look younger. Now one doctor says that's nothing but old news. According to Dr. John Lake, the world-renowned Beverly Hills beauty expert, most wrinkle fixes on the market are nothing but glorified moisturizers. He says they hardly make a dent on your appearance, and some can even be harmful to your skin. Recently, Dr. Lake has focused his attention away from mainstream cosmetic practices. Why? So that he can pursue a revolutionary anti-aging breakthrough one that some experts say could empty the wallets of the cosmetic industry. He says it's almost like Photoshop for your face. You may even be mad after seeing how easy it is to visibly erase wrinkles from view. His personal clients have dubbed his new do-it-yourself technique the Age Rewinder Method because it can take years or even decades off your appearance in under two minutes. So in light of this amazing breakthrough, Dr. Lake has released a step-by-step -step video to the public free and uninterrupted, where he outlines exactly how to use this simple solution from home. If this helps even one person look younger or feel more confident, I'll be thrilled knowing I helped, Dr. Lake told reporters. The video has since gone viral. At first, it was shared by users on Facebook, but since then it's racked up over 2.3 million views and counting. 
So far, the comments and feedback have been outstanding, with thousands of women reporting they look decades younger. One viewer even commented, Best results of anything I've used. I can't believe how well this works. I'll never stop using this. I don't understand how it works, but the results are great. Thank you. So you can find out more about this yourself right now. Go to bhmd1.com forward slash outspoken, or you can just clip on the link in the description box below. Let me repeat, bhmd1, the number one, dot com forward slash outspoken. Now, there is one thing Dr. Lake asks from his viewers. If watching this video helps you look and feel younger than you have in years, then please share this video with your friends and loved ones. Together, we have the power to help as many women reclaim a youthful look as possible. So go watch the video at bhmd1.com forward slash outspoken right now, or just click on the link in the description box below. But now back to the show. Yeah, and I actually think, Georgia, that's a really fair point. But the thing is, I was never saying ITV can't do this. They are a commercial organization. They can do whatever they want. But I think that there should be able to be a debate around it. That was my point. And actually, my tweet literally said how woke ITV does diversity. I was stating a fact. I wasn't saying they shouldn't do this. But what I found so offensive is the fact that that tweet was then used to create an accusation of me inciting hate and racism, which is actually completely untrue, totally libelous, actually, and very often what people on the left do in order to shut down debate because they want to terrify any white person, for example, into never questioning positive discrimination, even though I know for sure, Georgia, that ITV, for example, Lots of my former colleagues, I mean, for people who don't know, I actually worked at ITV Daytime for 10 years. I know how they operate very, very well. I was the showbiz presenter on The Lorraine Show, which sort of was part of the same stable as Loose Women. And I know lots of the Loose Women. I know lots of the people who work behind the scenes. But I also know there's been lots of people at ITV who have been told, you are losing your job on screen because we are specifically hiring a black person for the job. Now, they don't talk about we need to hire a working class person. They don't talk about we need to hire an Asian person. ITV has a very specific mindset of what they consider diversity. And I believe that it's wrong. Absolutely. I agree with Angela that obviously when it comes to our personal lives, it's better to keep a cool head always. Um, but I think when it comes to an organization like ITV, as you're saying, Dan, um, they have a huge amount of influence, probably the second biggest uh, TV organization in the country. And I think that what you're saying about them having these targets to hire specifically black people or black women or, you know, saying that it's wrong uh, to have an all white panel. I think it's sad and I think it 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 implies that there's something wrong with being right, uh, with being white, sorry. Um, and I think it also risks elevating people for reasons other than merit. And let's be real, you know. Uh, traditional television, the viewer viewer figures are going down. Surely they want to inspire more people to tune in rather than putting people there, um, you know, because they tick a certain box. And I know, you know, obviously Loose Women isn't all in the program, but let's say, for example, if I were hired um, because of my religious background or because of where I'm from, I think I would be quite upset and quite downtrodden. And I would think, why are they not hiring me, you know, on merit? And I think it's just not helpful. And I think. Of course, um, you know, Loose Women, you know, it's not politics live. It's not a really high, lofty intellectual debate type show. It's not for that. It's for these kind of casual, casual debates about important issues. But I think it's political without realising it. It's kind of, it buys into this uh, woke ideology without even realising it because that is the norm now. And I think that's quite dangerous. And I think people, people are tuning out probably, you know, that is one of the reasons why. No, absolutely. They, they, they absolutely are. And... Look, I didn't say in my ex post, maybe it would have been unkind for me to do so. But Charlene White is one of those people who has very much benefited from positive discrimination. She's not a talented woman and she has got a lot of work uh, because of diversity quotas. Now, that is OK if that's what ITV wants to do. But I do think it does actually mean there are other people now who have been overlooked for jobs. And personally, I don't believe in positive discrimination at all. But I just think we should be able to have the debate without revolting accusations about racism and 
inciting hate for on around. But George Leah Gaholi, thank you so much. So brilliant to have you on Outspoken for the first time today. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wooten Outspoken. Please click on my face just to the bottom left to subscribe to this brand new independent news source and turn on the notification bell so you'll be alerted to our brand new live shows, uncancelled interviews and special royal episodes. Outspoken is also now available as a podcast so you can listen to the show every weekday on the go wherever you are. 